One of the very best things I like about uh, my smart board is it's actually hooked up to video conferencing capabilities. So we use that quite a bit with our book club. We meet once a month with three different high schools in Canada. And so this is actually our video conference um, set up. We also did a project called the Digital Flat Stanley and we video conferenced with the schools that we had partnered with for our Flat Stanley project. So that's wonderful and I love to use it that way. But I also use it for United streaming videos. So anything a regular projector would be used for, that's what this becomes for me. In second through fourth grades, we implemented a new robotics program called Lego We Do. And the software, when we first began, the students needed to be walked through it. So I used this as a large group uh, setting with a smart board and I would be here and they would have their robotics kits. And so the first project, I would just let them do the dancing birds. We would go through the video and it shows the setup, what they're actually going to be building, presents the problems. They wanted to create dancing birds in different ways. And so this was a great uh, science math collaboration with the robotics. And as it skips forward, it will break down how to build it. it talks about the gears. So the students would be at their individual, they actually worked in partners for this, they would have their individual kits working in groups and they would build it step by step and I would explain the names of the bricks for each one. Everybody could do it together. So that by the third lesson, they were building their own projects by themselves using computer software at workstations and in teams. And it was really, that was a great, great way to start that project. I also have a few um, music classes. And last year I taught fifth grade twice a week because I'm gifted and talented with the fifth grade teaching. Sometimes I just do push-ins and the teacher had asked me to address music. This was one of the students' favorite games. It's called um, basketball. And they knew when they saw the basketballs that it was time to play. What the students would have to do, and all of these symbols that you're seeing are available on the Smart Board Gallery. And it's just a music teacher's dream because I didn't have to do any of this, I just dragged it. So what the students do, I can cover up using my screen. So the students would be divided into two teams and they would play basketball. And the basketball is big at our school. So they would have to play this rhythm after I'd introduced basic, short, long, quarter notes, half notes, time signatures, you can see. The student then from their team would have to clap or play on rhythm sticks this rhythm exactly. If they did that, they had the opportunity to shoot a basket, which was a small ball into a laundry basket. And so it was highly competitive, totally fun. And then um, we would just continue on, but you can see the different kinds of you know, rhythms that we could do. And it's just a bunch of different things to make sure that they understood and of course that lent itself to, well you didn't get this rhythm so what do we need to review? It was a great review for that. Then one of the extension things I did with them was uh, create your own rhythm. Yeah, there it was. Make up your own rhythm, two measures long with any combination of notes and rests as long as there are four beats in both measures. And so they would give those to me and then they could write them, drag them onto the smart board. So that was a really fun project. Another thing I do with, um, I have a pre-K student who is advanced, who is reading, and I'm really proud of this. This was something I just got from the Smart Tech site, smarttech.com, and what he did, you can see there are cars down here with, an, with consonants. He would actually, and he loved, anytime the students can touch the board, that's fantastic. He loved to be able to drag the card to where it belongs. So for example, we have a turkey over here, so he would drag the parked car with that initial sound, T, into the turkey parking space. So he's matching the, the consonants with the initial sounds. So there are lots of great, already created ideas out there. Wonderful. One of the things I've really noticed is the breaking up of attention spans. If I can have them doing something as an opener, when they first walk in the door, attention grabber, 
that's awesome. Bell starter, whatever, bell ringer. And that's been a great thing. And then having them work individually on something, but then drawing them back in when I have instruction to give them, using that to focus, that's really been terrific. And then after they do their individual work, as additional practice, we could go back. We did a great thing with analogies. That was so much fun. They took turns. I had an analogy written with the space missing. And so that just enables me not to have to do it over and over and over. I can store these lessons. And so I think that's really something, uh, creating a library that I can draw from. Very easy to use. It's so natural to the students. We come from the iPod generation where I touch it, it happens. And so it really is very easy and I just wouldn't teach without it, honestly. So they enjoy it so much because it does interact with them. They are engaged. I know when they're moving from their seat to do something on the board, everybody's wanting a chance to do it. So it's great.